Okay, I'll get started. Um, so today my topic is about the old Chinese reconstruction of uh, demonstratives zhi, shi, and zi. Uh, these three words that, uh, if according to uh, traditional commentaries, that uh, they are synonyms. Uh, but uh, uh, there are lots of um, issues uh, surrounding these three. Um, the, um, I think that uh, since Chinese has been um, a monosyllabic language for quite a while, and then um, the writing system sort of also like, reinforces it somehow, that uh, um, we are easily fooled into believing that uh, the Chinese texts convey only meaning, and we, like, sometimes neglect that the, um, the sound uh, that goes with every word, well, every word uh, that's something that's uh, important too. Um, so I think uh, um, Baxter and Salga's book mentioned that how useful the new um, old Chinese reconstruction um, intends for reading uh, text reading especially those, um, those um, paleographic uh, te uh, text written in paleographs. And uh, I actually also think that uh, when it comes to interpreting Chinese grammar, uh, that uh, knowing the sound is also important. Uh, the modern Chinese, uh, modern Mandarin um, negative Mei, for example, uh, might not have been um, derived from a verb, like some suggested, uh, but uh, from a phonologically uh, reduced form of wu as uh, pan wu uh, proposed. Uh, so that the knowing the having the phonological knowledge, um, in my opinion, uh, is important when it comes to uh, deciphering Chinese syntax. Um, but uh, saying that, that but I, I feel a little guilty that uh, I cannot give you a very beautiful solution to the things that I will uh, I'm about to say. Um, rather that uh, I, I happily came here with lots of my questions and those things that bothered me and troubled me, uh, made me puzzled and uh, I can't sleep at night. And uh, uh, then uh, I would like to come here and uh, actually get helped by so many uh, excellent specialists in Chinese uh, phonology and uh, related fields. So I see that if you could help me uh, that uh, uh, for the this sets of demonstratives that I work on. Um, more precisely, that uh, uh, we, um, I like the idea that uh, the OC uh, reconstruction, this assumption that uh, the old Chinese reconstruction uh, should maximally um, reveal the linguistic history of the items that we are reconstructing. And when it comes to these three words that uh, I think that what uh, uh, concerned uh, this, this graphic or paleographic connections <laughs> among them and uh, possible etymological and uh, morphological connections. Uh, speaking of etymological and uh, morphological relation, um, Polly Black had a study on the morphology of Chinese um, demonstrative pronouns uh, in classical Chinese. And the first quote that uh, he identified the cognates on the Tibetan the, I, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, okay, uh, corresponds to Chinese zhi, and this li uh, corresponds to uh, Chinese shi. And because of this, that it really <coughs> gave me uh, confidence that uh, I probably was right that the, by writing uh, shi and zhi as dental, because they, as you know, is the, uh, as you know that the, the Middle Chinese is the paradox that um, the default all, all Chinese source is dentals, and I, that's what I thought. And um, seeing this Tibetan cognates, that uh, it makes me believe that what I think uh, is right. <coughs> um, but, uh, but, uh, pretty bad. Doesn't think that this kind of dialectic 
uh, contrast between the Tibetan demonstratives applied to Chinese. Uh, he rather thinks that it is something independently uh, developed in Tibetan. But in any case, that uh, um, um, I think um, writing a uh, something in, in, in English uh, that makes us wonder about what kind of phonetic value that we should give because if it's right, we're writing in Chinese that I don't really have to give a pronunciation to zhi or shi or zi or whatever I can just write and so that was the question that I had so uh, when I did my dissertation I just I asked around and made sure that the, this is the, the the dental is the right form um, so um, but I'm obsessed with this because of the things that I'm about to say later. Uh, but in any case, um, the Kulipran also noted that uh, um, this zi and zi, which is this, and shi and shi, uh, the, the, the status in the demonstrative system is a little bit uh, tricky, but uh, let's <laughs> leave it for the time being. Uh, that uh, um, these two sets, that it's easy for you to see that they have this uh, alternation between the zhi hu zhe ye zhi group and then the other e zhi no, the group, so zhi and the zhi hu the zhi group. Uh, so he thinks that uh, this zi, which is um, the one on the right, is derived from zi uh, in the same way as shi derived from shi, and the shi is, um, according to him, morphologically related to but stronger and more independent. Uh, because of the vowel that the, is belonging to the, the, his uh, category uh, of the, 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 the <coughs> more um, extrovert one, that the, so that the, it has more independence. And, oh, no, the introvert one, and so that it has more independence. But uh, in any case, and this study is done uh, based on classical Chinese. And what I would like to explore is what it is like uh, in the text, the non uh, received the text, or um, more precisely in the oracle bone inscriptions and the bronze inscriptions. And first, if we look at the, um, the Shouwen's interpretation uh, of these three uh, graphs, this is the Xiaozhuan forms, um, that the um, Xisheng last zhi as chu uh, to come out, and or to go, and shi as zhi, straight, and zi as to stop. And the graphic um, interpretation is that the zhi is a pictograph that's uh, depicting a, the grass overgrowing uh, out of the ground, and shi is, uh, consists of two, uh, if it's tong, uh, x, y, and that means that he I mean, we think that Xu Xiong thinks that uh, they are the Hui Yi category and has the, these two semantic particles that uh, combine together uh, to give the meaning of the character. And the same thing uh, with Si, uh, it has the component <coughs> of the Xu to stop and the B. And B, he thinks that the means to uh, put uh, against each other. Um, by looking at the, this the small Xiao Xiaozhuang form, that the, uh, we, can, we don't see much um, similarity among these three, uh, but uh, <coughs> somehow that we can see that the, the top part of this tree and the bottom part of here and the left part of here looks uh, kind of similar, but yeah. not exactly. Uh, but if we go into the bra the bone graphs, which is around uh, 14th to 11th century uh, BC, um, the earliest uh, graph for zhi uh, consists of a foot um, and with a very exaggerated, uh, do you call that thumb? <laughs> the, the big toe. <laughs> anyway, so that, that the big finger uh, um, of the foot. And uh, so going, uh, um, it seems like to meaning to go, but the uh, not so nice examples of the meaning to go is found in, in bone is inscriptions. But uh, in any case, we have this food radical, uh, I mean, <coughs> radical, the food component in the bones, but in the bronze, which is the Western Zhou after 11th uh, century BC, 
And it seems that the, it, the what Xu Shen said about this zhi, like the grass growing, outgrowing, uh, seems to be relevant here, that the, the right side looks like uh, plants uh, branching out. Uh, so we see that this, um, the, this corruption of this foot shape uh, in the bronze uh, graphs. <coughs> And if you, I can give you a very, very brief history about uh, what happened to Zhi uh, in the, from the bone inscription to bronze inscription uh, um, based on Jamri's study. Uh, it's simpler to just quote others so that I don't have to exist. Um, I, I have some similar theory, uh, but it's easier that we can find something um, here. That, uh, um, so in the Shang or Kobong inscriptions, Zhi contrasts with Zi. Um, the, it is problematic that the, it is kind of hard to find very strong evidence that the indicating Zhi is non, I mean, indicating any type of dialectic interpretation of Zhi because that the, it's just used uh, <coughs> anaphorically, referring to something that you mentioned uh, before. And in that usage, uh, like we can uh, think about uh, English word that or this, if you use this or that, referring to things that I just said, or referring to something I just mentioned, and then it doesn't matter if it's this or that, either way, either one can be used. So it is not a very strong indication about uh, that. So that's why that it, it, it became very controversial about um, what in, indeed is the uh, dialectic value <coughs> of this zhi. But in any case, that the, according to uh, Jamuri's study, that the, he, think, he finds that the, normally when zi is used, it refers to the space or time occupied by the speaker. And even if uh, in, in, in the anaphoric use, zhi uh, refers to the space or time that the speaker does not occupy, based on the, mainly based on this, that the, he thinks that the zhi is non-proximal. Uh, but he, he um, argues that the, during the Western Zhou, this zhi has become neutral in terms of dialectic contrast. So it's not a proximal or non-proximal anymore. Uh, according to him, and Zhi evolved into uh, two directions depending on the syntactic context. Uh, if it's on the, in the, at the nominal position, that it evolved towards a third person pronoun, uh, which the process, according to Jamuri, that uh, completed uh, at the spring and autumn period. And uh, at the other context, between two nouns that the zhi evolved into an attributive uh, marking particle. Uh, so in any case, you don't have to remember all this history, but the, um, it, a, a very key uh, change took place um, in the Western Zhou, uh, that the zhi uh, the became neutral in terms of um, dialectic contrast. Um, so that I have this questions regarding what I had said. Uh, so although Xu Shen's interpretation of Zhi does not fit the bone graphs, it seems acceptable based on Brown's uh, graphs. And remember that the Xu Shen used this Chu, the word Chu, that's something that uh, when I uh, was reading the new book, the new reconstruction of old Chinese, that instantly stand out for me, uh, is that uh, this Chu has this T, uh, T pre-initial uh, plus K, um, and it's used <coughs> to grasp zhi, so zhi is chu ye. Um, so is there any significance in this uh, grass? Uh, but of course, that the, the, for the rhyme part, it, uh, it, we can tell for sure that the, it doesn't match a zhi, but why is this chu deliberately chosen to grasp zhi? Um, this is um, something I thought. Um, also, that uh, we also find that the, the corruption of the foot components co-occur with the time that the, when zhi lost its um, dialectic um, contrast. So the z are they somehow related to the same kind of reason? Um, and also the last, um, this 
graphic <laughs> change, uh, does it like indicate that there's some kind of sound change behind it uh, from the Leisha to Western Joe? Um, especially this shape of foot, uh, which is this the uh, reconstructed in old Chinese. And uh, if we can interpret that over like the branching out or, or like growing out kind of grass or branches, does it refer to this word zhi, like to like branch or to branch mm -hmm. out? And in that case that we get this vo this vowel e. Okay. Uh, but it's just speculation and some those things that bothered me and I'm, and anyway, I'll go on. Um, so that's we remember that the, in the Xiao Zhuang form, the small seal form shi uh, is analyzed as uh, consists of uh, ri and zheng. Um, but if you look at the paragraphs, uh, this is from Gongming's, uh, with the browns and the, the seal or uh, bamboo forms, that the um, shi originally actually <coughs> also has this foot part. And then uh, with the, this, um, this this um, spoon um, shape um, components and it is um, Guo Moro who said that this the top part is is the is the spoon or ladle and and then it's the primary graph for the word uh, chu and if we look at the this sound of Shi and Shi, and they do match uh, quite well. Um, but and another thing that I actually noticed uh, is something. Uh, this is an excursion, but it doesn't lead any well. But I just think that it's kind of very interesting to to bring up if you have uh, some kind of knowledge about um, uh, cla pre-classical Chinese text. Uh, text. Um, that is, you notice that some of the forms that one, some of the uh, just simple that this this kind of handle of the spoon is quite uh, simple, like a cross. But some has some like fork like um, shape, um, so something like this. And if you sort of bend the, this part somehow, and, and you count the components, something looks like a zi, something looks like zhi, and then you have this fork like. Shape, and you get somehow look like shi, the small seal form of shi. Um, so it's the what uh, we know that in uh, those pre-classical texts that uh, some scholars would um, attribute it to the time of Western Zhou, and there is a, uh, the demonstrative written as shi, exactly the time shi. Um, so, and this form is actually regarded as an earlier form of shi. Uh, but if we, if this is true that the, they actually are not quite um, like the, this earlier and later type of relationship. <coughs> and also if we look at the period of history of shi and the shi, um, this the, the the graph that the is specially designed spe specially for the word uh, time uh, is was not uh, attested until the warring state period. Before that, according to uh, two studies done by uh, Takashima in two thousand six, uh, the graph for zhi represent two sounds. One is Sunday and then the other one is shi. So the, if you want to write the word shi, you use the graph zhi. Um, and so that means that the, the graph, the, this shi graph was created much later than shi. And although that as a demonstrative that, that's written in uh, received the text, that shi is identified as an earlier form. But the graph that actually assigned to this shi identified as shi um, is not early than, than, than shi, so it's kind of uh, um, a little bizarre to have this, but it's just an excursion, we can come back to shi. Um, if you are in interested, that uh, maybe we can talk um, after, later, okay. Um, anyway, uh, there's something also remarkable is 
the graphic presentation of Shi during the Warring States period, uh, that in two Zhongshan bronzes, uh, that dated to the Warring States period, that Shi is written six times as Shi, the clan Shi, and mostly in the phrase uh, of uh, uh, Shi, but not all the time. Um, and in the manuscripts, um, the, the, this Shi and the, 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 the Shi Bu Shi Shi and then this clan Shi, uh, they are also um, found that uh, as the phonetic loans for each other. Um, so according to the um, reconstruction in the uh, Baxter and Zagar's new book, and um, this Shi uh, should be reconstructed as the Kuda. And then, um, so um, if it's, then it, it poses the question, um, has, Parallelization taken place at least in some words during the Warring State period, or um, this the initial of the clan Shi uh, still uh, was keeping this um, <coughs> K pre-initial during that time. Um, anyway, so what I was trying to say is that the the, it, there's no strong uh, evidence, but there seems to be some little bit like hints about whether we give the a little bit, uh, uh, we include some kind of ver, ver, viva, uh, element in the the, 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 the the reconstruction of zhi or shi. We mentioned that the, it seems that from shang to zhou that the graph changed from representing, uh, I mean, depicting foot to depicting some kind of like branching uh, thing, branching out. And then Xu Sheng gives the glass chu ye for zhi. Uh, and also we have this uh, uh, shi re written as the uh, clan shi with the uh, villa. Um, so uh, this is why that I was, uh, I was really obsessed with whether I'm happy with just write, write it as the, and which makes me really comfortable because then you have this Tibetan uh, cognate, um, or that it has something that <laughs> makes us think that uh, there is a contact with uh, the ke, um, which actually is mm, originally um, started me, uh, start, I started think, thinking about this because uh, Meizou Ling had, um, I forgot which year, but very long time ago, had a, an article about the Zhi and Qi, and uh, he, he reconstructed the Zhi with uh, Ge Xiang and had uh, provided some evidence that the, but some of them are not that, um, I think, the, not that strong, but uh, uh, he later gave up this uh, morphological relation between Zhu <laughs> and Qi uh, because that uh, it seems that Qi it's kind of hard to establish its pronominal uh, usage at the earlier period. Uh, but um, I, I I think um, Takashima had the paper in press that uh, actually he 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 also had the, he and uh, Nibison had the. Um, articles of uh, thinking about actually qi is both um, modal and um, pronominal so that if you know this kind of um, morphological uh, process is going on between zhi and qi and uh, and zhi actually has this kind of k type of thing i cannot sort things out but i'm just providing you with what i found and hopefully that the uh, you, you, you can sort of help me to just maybe I can dismiss it or you know so be happy and sleep well or <laughs> um, and, or, or, or I can really uh, do something di different. Um, another thing that I found um, quite entertaining is if you look at the, 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 the graph of uh, Ci, um, this is the bone graph, this is the bronze that it also has this foot and um, the right side is uh, uh, this is B. Um, in the in the bones, uh, the graphs for person and graphs for 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 spoon, it's kind of hard to distinguish. Um, kind of all mixed. Um, but in any case, uh, look at the rounds that, that you will see that it's like um, 
this stuff, um, the side of you of this spoon. Um, and if this is true, and you will see that the shi having a component that's the front view of a spoon, and then zi has the side view of a spoon, and this one has zi, and that one has, has zi too. So um, I, I don't know why it, it's just accidentally like similarity, or that it, it has some deeper reason. Uh, I haven't thought it out, but I just thought it's interesting. Um, but um, we can actually uh, look at further look at the, this graph uh, in connection with chi, uh, the spoon. The common uh, interpretation uh, actually follow the Shuo Wen Jie Zi by Xu Shen uh, is Xu Shen said Bi actually had two meanings. Thank you. Um, one is to uh, it's similar with this B, put against each other, um, B. And uh, yeah, it's also uh, the things that used to uh, scoop rice. And so in this meaning, uh, it, it's also called uh, si. Um So, Duan uh, Yitai's commentary says that uh, this graph of B represent two words. First, to compare, and the other one, uh, the spoon. And he said that uh, only the second one meaning survived, and the other one died out. And this uh, is not attested uh, in uh, so-called the Jing, uh, those classical texts. And according to um, those Shouwen scholars uh, study that this is one of them, uh, Wang Yun, said that uh, it's um, oh, the earliest mentioning of this uh, graph is in Korean, <coughs> and he says that the, um, so they st they, the, the scholars claim that the, this is the name uh, that in the, uh, the, the graph was created uh, in a, during the Han Dynasty because that the, they, they, this is Han person, uh, Han people's way of calling spoon. And uh, I think uh, I didn't quote it here, but uh, um, there's a commentary to Han Shu saying like this Beifeng Ren, so the northerners call uh, Bi as Chi. Uh, in any case, in Wang Ming's opinion, that the Bi and Chi have the same similar sound, Yi Shang Chi Zhuang. And because the sound changed, and then this Shi was added to indicate the sound. Uh, because this is Han, so I just put the later Han uh, reconstruction by Swiss work there. Um, so you see that the, it seems it seems this B, uh, if it means spoon, represent the word spoon, it's not read as B, or it should be something that 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 that's similar to shi, and then uh, which I mean sounding like shi during the Han Dynasty, and uh, but um, some something similar in earlier time, and in addition to chi. And uh, we mentioned si, right? So it's also called si. And in the showers entry of si, uh, the Xu Shen mentioned that uh, li, li ji. And so he basically is saying like, in the li ji, uh, we don't have uh, bi, we have si. And uh, this is tong mu and si sheng. So si is the phonetic. Um, so uh, does it mean that the bi should be read in the sound of si? Uh, which is the uh, ju, uh, the fat ju, uh, right, Gouf and the uh, uh, Baxter and the uh, Sabara reconstructed with this slur, okay. Um, and also that uh, this is sometimes that we find, we, we less commonly find that uh, this obviously not matching sound, the bi and ju, bi and ni, that this two uh, bi are identified as the phonetic in these two words by Xu Shen. Um, so does it mean that the, uh, this, this B graph uh, represent, can represent the si, represent shi, represent uh, the, some kind of um, fat, uh, zhi, um, that sound? And so I have, I have no answer for that. Um, and, but for the meaning, well, for the word, 
that uh, the graphs represent, and I can uh, show you that the, uh, the earliest time this this graph existed in, in the, the, the earliest extent um, <coughs> in the Oracle books. And um, Zhang Yujing actually identified this one as a conjunction uh, thus, um, but many others don't uh, take Zi as a function word here, but rather a um, kind of like a sacrifice uh, here, and which also makes sense. Um, and so the main, main uh, common interpretation here as a type of sacrifice, uh, which scholars often do when they don't know what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, then Zi uh, is definitely uh, represents some kind of pro uh, proper noun uh, in uh, Western Joe Browns, because you can see that this person made uh, the father sing uh, some, some vessel, and also it occurs as the emblem. Uh, it, is, it is in the early spring and autumn period that we found the earliest example of the use of zi as, a, as this, as a demonstrative. And so that's the early um, spring and autumn period. So, um, the common claim uh, between zi and zi uh, that is um, zi is the earlier form and then zi is the later um, later form and the sound change that uh, involved in this change is not uh, well studied uh, but at least we know that the bronze inscriptions indicate that the zi started to show up around the spring and autumn period and the function and meaning stay similar to zi and in the shooting, and we can we can see that zi occurs only 14 times, uh, maybe in the Dai and Zhou Song section, uh, well, zi occurred six, uh, 86 times. And in the Shang Shu, uh, which is, seems more like more conservative, zi occurred 60 times and zi only three times. Um, so uh, we can see. Uh, I, I have a question here that uh, why was the graph formally used to represent the proper now adopted for representing the proximate. Um, demonstratives around this time. Uh, so it is that particular reason uh, that it's chosen. And also that as we have mentioned that the uh, Bank also noted that uh, this uh and the uh, uh, type of alternation between these two sets. Um, so um, if we look at the overall the history of these three things, uh, three words, uh, during the Western Zhou, uh, Zhi became neutral in terms of distance contrast. Uh, Shi emerged as the, some kind of emphatic, uh, anaphoric pronoun. So uh, this used to assist the king. So use this, is, uh, this use is that uh, use this. So there is a, a proposing of the object. And this is the uh, earliest use uh, that attested for Shi. Um, and as we know, that the Zhang Li reported that the uh, Zhi continued to evolve towards the third person pronoun and the tributary marker during the spring and autumn. And then it is uh, during this time that the uh, Zhi increased its use as the emphatic anaphoric pronoun. And one instance of Zhi uh, used as a um, determiner, so Zhi plus a noun. Uh, is found and the most likely is so-called exploric and that means like I'm just it, it is in the real uh, in the physical uh, existence of the <coughs> situation and you pointed to this or that instead of anaphoric use um, in the piece that uh, 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 best, uh, dated to the late spring and autumn period and so, uh, around this time spring and autumn also emerged as approximate demonstrative so um, my my actual hypothesis is um, that the uh, shi actually emerged as some kind of element of zhi uh, at a, a particular um, syntactic position, uh, which um, we have. I have some interpretation, but we don't have to mention it. We can just say it's some special syntactic positions and. The, the time that when Shi appeared uh, to the time that the 
Ci appeared. There is a gap of a few hundred, e uh, a couple of hundred years. I mean, a few hundred years. And so it, it, it it's kind of. Um, I I think it's less likely that uh, they are uh, derived in the same process. Uh, instead, that uh, probably uh, this zi uh, changed to zi is trying to match the, the sound of shi by uh, the analogy. And also during this time, shi started to acquire dietic function. And the further, um, my further hypothesis is probably the this proximal made through two different processes that they compete for the that slot of. Um, Approximate pronoun this in Chinese language from that point on, and then probably uh, this one, this <coughs> one, one, and then uh, give our zhe. If you think about the pronunciation zhe, and this is the myth that uh, that haven't hasn't been solved in the Chinese syntax that historical syntax that the, what, which form gives the modern Chinese zhe, and there are many. Um, zhi or something, but zhi, the, 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 the phonetically zhi doesn't, the zhi hu zhi ye zhi doesn't work well, but, but if you think about shi uh, and in, in terms of graphic uh, formation and in terms of sound, shi is a quite good candidate to give uh, zhi in Chinese. Um, anyway, the last thing I want to mention uh, that is um, uh, we, we see that the, th this food radical in all this three. Um, so um, this might be just accidental, but if it's not, what was the function of this th this food? Um, um, is it trying to indicate some kind of phonetic value? But we see that the the, 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 the phonetic value seems to be not 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 like compatible. Uh, uh, is it or is it some kind of semantic indicator that they are somehow all related to um, some at least a pronominal <laughs> kind of usage. Uh, so that's something that I, I haven't decided, but that's all that I'm presenting today. Thank you.